Hello, welcome to Zigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for fine art. You can call it visual art as well, cultural and creative art. Now for this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't have this application installed already in your device, I will advise you download this app in order for you to follow along this class. Now, Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for exams, for various exams, such as UTME, post-UTME, WASE, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Calbepedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, to mention but a few. You can download the app from our website, www.examguide.com or you can download it as well as using your Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update, to be updated on new videos as we upload. Now, if you're ready for today's class, okay, let's get started. Hello. All right, welcome once again for another brown edition of, uh, you know, art. Now, today we'll be looking at the traditional arts in Nigeria. We'll take our time to go through these traditions and some of those arts in Nigeria. So for those of you that love history, come on, it's history time and let's get in. All right. During the course of this lesson, there are some things I would want you to get to know. The number one thing you will learn at the end of this class is one, you will, ex you will learn to explain Nigerian traditional art. Number two, you'll be able to state the 10 Nigerian traditional arts. Number three, not just explaining them, you will know each and every one of them. And number four thing I want you to know is you will know how to state their materials, the materials they use in producing these works, the location where these works were made, and what's the aim of each of this what Nigerian art. Okay. Now, having said that, let's dive into our class for today. Now, some artworks were discovered in some notable locations within Nigeria. Now, these artifacts were either excavated by archaeologists or found in old shrine. Some of them were found in burial chambers or some of them were found under uncommon locations like forest. Now, for better understanding of this level, we're going, we are going to emphasize the place, as in the locations, the medium, and what we we'll summarize what the feature of the art. Now, there are 10 basic what Nigerian art we will consider in this topic. How many, how many Nigerian art we will consider? 10. We're going to look at 10 of them. Okay, so now let's hit and go. Now, the first one we're going to talk about is the knock art. Now, the knock art is known as the oldest traditional art in Nigeria. Hello, did you get that? I said knock art is known as what? The oldest traditional art in Nigeria. Now, the knock art or the knock culture is a culture which provides evidence of what the earliest ancient civilization of Nigeria. Now, to some of us, we feel a civilization just Nigerians, I don't know. But in Africa, we have some beautiful and sound artifacts that, actually, that have actually survived the years. Now, the first one we noticed or we discovered in Africa or in Nigeria is what? The Nok. Now, the Nok culture is named after the city Nok in the present was Kaduna State, where the first find object or cultural artifact were excavated by what archaeologists in 1929. So that was when they discovered the knock art in 1929. Now, there is an archaeologist called, he's a miner, the late Colonel John Dance Young. He's an Englishman who was leading some, 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 some miners you know, to an operation in the northern or southern village in Nok. Now, during this period where they were marching, they were, you know, looking for, they were going to mine, one of his men discovered what the sculptural work, it's called what, a terracotta. I don't know if you can see the image on my slide. Now, that is exactly the image that one of his, um, his workers found on their way. Now, other objects, that we, are, we are, that, that we are also found are the terracotta heads and what a foot, to mention but a few. Amongst the oldest work of art even known in Nigeria are the Nok Terawata and the Nok Terracotta figure. Now we have the Terawata or the Terawita 
and then the terracotta. Now, somebody will ask Mr. Christopher or Mr. Michael, what is terracotta? Fine. Now, let me explain what terracotta means. Now, terracotta is another name given to what? Baked clay. You can call it what? Baked clay. Now, terracotta is a technical work, meaning baked clay. Now, by the 1977, about 153 monk terracotta pieces had been what? Found during mining what? Operation, incidentally. In several places, they discovered some of these artworks, like the one you have down there. You see how the man looks. So these were some of the works, some of the ancient works that were found in the northern part of what Nigeria as the knock art known today. Now, the medium for knock art, like I've been saying it over and over again. Now, the knock art is known for what? Terracotta sculpture. Terracotta means baked clay or burnt clay. It, we call it what? The, the work of what? A burnt clay that is born into reddish brown color. Now, knock art is the oldest traditional art in Nigeria. Put that at the back of your mind. I want that to sink. Knock art is the oldest traditional art in Nigeria. Now, let's look at the location. Now, remember, I told us the medium. When you hear the word medium, what do I mean by the word medium? Medium means the material that is used to produce a particular what? work of what? art. So what is the medium? What are the material? So now we've talked about the medium that it, the not people use. They use what? Baked clay. After molding what they're molding, now they'll just put it into you know, an oven or they create their own kind of a king. And then they fire this work to become what? Reddish brown or reddish what? Or reddish in color. So that is what we call the baked clay. Now the location. Now the knock art is located in a village in Kaduna. Also the old Abuja and the old Kahanchan in Kastina Allah. These are the places where knock art was found. Hey, let me come back again. The knock art was found in the villages in Kaduna. We have another place it was found, we are, that, that it was actually found was in the old Abuja, and we also have what, in the old Kahanchan, and then in Kastina Allah. These are the places where the knock art was found. Are you with me? All right, so now let's go over to the second arts movement in Nigeria. But before we go into that, let's talk about what the characteristic features of some of this artwork. Let's talk about what their character, how did they look like? What exactly, how, how did they function? What exactly is it made up of? What exactly is it made up of? Now, number one, they are stylized human and animal form. Now, these artworks are stylized human and animal form. Don't worry, I will explain exactly what that means. Now, the number two characteristics of those works is that they have triangular eyes. Their eyes are what? In triangles. And then number three is that they have elaborated hairdo. Now, they make their hair in such a way that it becomes so elaborated. Now, this is exactly some of the characteristics features of what? The art. Then the number four characteristics feature of this art is that the pupils of the eyes are pierced and the nose three. They are pierced. They represent them with what? Holes. They pierce the eyes or represent them with what holes. As in, after making the sculptural works, they will now pierce the eyes, you know, to represent the pupils with what holds. And including the nose, they pierce it. Now, on that future is that these artworks, the height ranges from 10 centimeter to 1.5 meter high. From 10 centimeter to 1.5 meter high. So these are the characteristic features of what the knock art. Did you get that? All right, now let's look at some of these images of the knock art. Now, I want you to take your time and download those images. Look at it over and over again, comparing it with what the characteristics feature. Now, remember I told you the number one characteristic feature is that their eyes or the human figures and animal figures, they have their what stylized. Now, can you see how stylized this shape, the human figures are? Very beautiful. And I told you again that another characteristic is that they have triangular eyes. If you see their eyes are in triangles. So anytime you see an artwork that has what a triangular eyes, just know that what it is what knock art. And on that is sometimes there are some other arts that looks like the knock. But what will differentiate it completely is that the knock art represents the pupils of the eyes with a hole. They pierce the eyes, they pierce the eyes, and the nose too are also what pierced. So these are some of the differentiation between the knock art and any other art we're going to discuss in the course of the study. Now, also put it at the back of your mind that they have elaborated hairdo. If you see this guy, look at his head. <laughs> you know, elaborated hairdo. Let me give you some other image. Now, you look at it, you just, I guess, now this will actually hit it. Now, you see, um, while I was growing up, we call this puff puff. <laughs> so, they have a kind of um, this puff puff hairdo design. And now, watch. 
I told you the features of the, that it has what triangular eyes. Are you seeing the triangle on the eyes? And then the, the people of the eyes is pierced. The same thing with this other image you have by your by my right or right. So these are the images that represent the knockout. So whenever you see these images, take your time and know them. Take your time to know them. Look at them over and over again and make sure you know them. So that in case you see them in an exam, they might ask you. This image represents what art? You just say, okay, this is the knock art. How is it a knock art? Knock art images are represented with what? Triangular eyes. They have elaborated hairdo. The pupil of the eyes appears. And it ranges from what? 10 centimeters to 1.5 meters in height. So this is, these are the characteristic features of the knock art. All right. Now let's go over to the second art we'll talk about is the Ife art the ife art i'm trying as much as possible to be as fast so that we'll gather as much as we can before we run out of time so i want you to join me in the speed okay well listen slow and steady is always advised but you know speed and steady then you get it clean so but i want us now to add a little speed you know in flowing me are you with me all right so let's look at the ife the Ife is a very popular art in Nigeria, very popular, not just in Nigeria, in the world. Now, kings and gods were often depicted with large heads because the artists, the artists believe that the assay was held in the head. Now, the assay being is the inner power and the energy of, 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 what, of a person. We hear my assay. It means what? My inner power and my energy. So, so they depict this thing in the head. The feel that your inner power and your energy comes from what? The head. So that was exactly why the Ife people, they, they, they concentrate more on the head. Now, both historical figure of the Ife and the offices associated with them are represented in their art. One of the best document, document, uh, documents among this is the early king Abalufu II, who is said to have invented what? The bronze casting in honor, in his honor. You know, is 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 one of the people that invented you know the, the bronze casting that explained the Ife figure. Now he 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 made some of these things in a naturalistic form with copper, and some of them are casted in life sizes. Some of these images are casted in what in life sizes. All right. Now these are some perfect example of the Ife figure. Don't worry, we're going to talk about the characteristics features of this Ife figure, and then we'll explain them in details. Now, the Ife city was a settlement of substantial size between the 12th century and the 14th century, which houses, which houses featuring pavement and what post shed. Now, in Ilefe, Ilefe is known as what is known worldwide for its ancient and naturalistic bronze, stones, and terracotta sculpture. That is one of the things that made Ilefe very, very popular, which reached their peak of what artistic expression between 1200 to 1400 AD. That is after Christ's death. Now, let me let me let me let me come back a little bit so that you get this. Ilefe is known worldwide for its ancient and naturalistic bronze, stone, and terracotta sculpture, which reached their peak. Of artistic expression between the two thousand between one thousand two hundred to one thousand four hundred eighty. Now, these are just a brief history of the Ilefe. Now, in the period around one thousand three hundred CE, the artist at Ilefe developed a refined and naturalistic sculptural tradition in terracotta, stone, and copper alloy, and what brows, including bronze and many other, of which appears to have what been created under the patronage of the king of Balufun II. You remember I mentioned, I talked about him earlier in a, you know, when I was introducing this. So he, he, he patronized the art a whole lot. Now the man who today is identified as the Yoruba patron deity of brass, of brass casting, weaving and what regalia. Now Obalufun is known as the deity of what brass casting weaving and any form of what casting regalia you can think of he's the very one that is known for that now after this period the production declined as political and economical power shifted to the nearby kingdom of the benin now as the benin kingdom 
started growing. It now affected the Ife kingdom, the Ile Ife kingdom. And then the Benin grew to a point where eventually the Ile Ife were, as in, re no longer relevant. Now, like the Yoruba kingdom of the Oyo, which developed into what? A major empire. Now, the Benin grew like the Yoruba kingdom of the Oyo, which now what? Is almost a major empire. That is in that, during those period. All right. Now, so these are some of the, the, the Ife artwork. You see how beautiful and artistic they look. How elegant and very sound and strong. Now, some of these works we are made with bronze. Why some are terracotta works? Some of them are casted. Some of them are made with what? With wood. Now, these are what the Ife people did in that time. Now, remember the, the, the knock art. The people of the eyes are pierced, but this one, the eye is just like that, bald, as if they are blind, you see? And uh, it has this elaborated head with you, and they, are, they, they, they look very realistic. All right. So now let's consider, let's look at some of the medium that was used by the Leife people. Now, the number one medium that the Leife people, the, the, the Leife people use is what? The terracotta. They work with terracotta. They work with bronze. They work with wood. They work with stone. These are the things they worked with. Now, the location where the Eleife was um, found. We have the place like Eta Yemu, the Eta Yemu quarters in what? Eleife town in Oshun State. So these are the places where these works were found. Now let's look at the characteristic features of the work. Now, some of the characters of this work, they were mostly done for the palace. Hence, they are referred to as what? Cut art. Whenever you hear which art is a cut art, just know that they are talking about what? The what? If a art. If a art are mainly done for the palace. Now, some are heavily costumed with headdress, anklets, and necklets, even bracelets. Now, they wear them. If you look at the previous image I showed you, you see how elegant, you know, they wear headdresses, you know, anklets, bracelets. Those are the things that are the features of what the Ife art. Now, some other features is that now some of these Ife figures have scarifications, that is, vertical lines on them. Little one that you see the Yoruba people, they have these tribal marks. So on the artworks too, they try as much as possible to have these words, vertical lines on the faces of what the artwork. They we are the most naturalistic and the natural what artifact found in Nigeria. The Ife artwork is the most naturalistic, as in they look so real that is found in what in Nigeria. So put that at the back of your mind. So now let's consider some of this image. You see how real they look. They look like real human heads, you know. Okay, so these are, you know, you see the bracelets, anklets, and then how they wear a liberated hairdo. All right, so these are the futures of the Ife. Now let's talk about another kingdom, a very popular kingdom, which is known as the Benin Art, the Benin Kingdom. And the image at the center is a very popular image that eventually, if you're a Nigerian, you've seen this image a million times. It is a very popular image. The Society of Nigerian Artists. That is their logo, which is this very image. In fact, the three images you have here, they are popular image. So whenever you see this image, it should sink in your mind that this is what Benin art. So I want you to take notes of these images I'm showing you because definitely, definitely, you will definitely see them in your exams. So you need to know them. So whenever they ask you which image is this, you can say, okay, this is from Benin. This is from the Nok. This is from the Leife. This is from Owo, this is from, you know, Mbari, depending on what the number of lessons we are going to learn in the course of this study. So now let's move further into talking about the Benin. I'll be very fast with the Benin. Now the Benin art is the art from the Kingdom of Benin or Edo Empire. It started in the year 1440 to 1894. A pre-colonial African state located, located in what is now known as what? The South-South region of Nigeria. Now the art we are primarily made of cast bronze and carved ivory and carved ivory. Now, Benin art was produced mainly for the court and for the Oba of Benin. Now, this art were mainly done for the kings, for the Oba of Benin. A divine ruler for whom his craftsman produced a range of what ceremonial significant subjects. Now, the full complexity of these works can be appreciated only through the awareness and consideration of what two. There are two ways you can appreciate these works. Number one, the contemporary culture perception of the Benin art. 
is that one, for you to appreciate it, you look at it through what the Western appreciation of the team primarily was, which is known as what? As an artwork. You can just appreciate it with the Western culture. They see it as an artwork. Wow, this is a beautiful artwork. That is one way you can actually appreciate the Benin art because of how artistic and how beautiful, how as creative and intricate the designs are. Now, the second way you will understand it is they are underst like understanding it through the spectrum of what the Benin people as a historical what document and a what monarch device to construct what history to reconstruct what history so these are the two major ways you can actually appreciate those Benin art first as an artwork and second as a historical what document and now also have this in mind that these objects to some of them are also used for what ritual purposes they are ritual objects so are you woman beautiful all right now let's dive in to look at the modern and the medium that is used by the Benin people now the Benin people use the mediums like stone and they use wood they use terracotta they use bronze figures they use ivory they use uh, they use ivory and they carve on elephant what tusk so these are the medium that was used by what the Benin people now the Benin is located in Benin city in Edo state so that's the location for Benin city. Now let's look at the characteristic features of the Benin art. Now they we are now the characteristic features of Benin art. They we are royal or they are royal or cut art work because they are what's generally done for palace. Let me explain that. They are cut art or royal art because they are done for the kings. It's not for small boys. It's for the kings for the royalties. That is the people that what purchases what these artworks. Now they we are also what heavily costumed with beads, necklace, anklets, bracelets headdresses to mention but a few and they also what look real like the Ife art you know the Benin and Ife they share common boundary so they look real now some Benin artworks we are standing figures of human beings and figures of what horses back and of what musicians now so these are some of the figures and some of the characteristics features of what the Benin art so I'm going to see how fast I can go so let's look at one more art before we call it because there is no way we can finish this in one section this should be a three section class but however follow me as much as we can take let's cover as much as we can now the next art we'll look at what is the essay art is what the essay art now the essay town is another town i enjoy so much i call it the land of 800 soapstones so the essay town is known as what well, the land of 800 soapstones now let's take a brief history of the essay the essay is a town in Kwara state in nigeria now this town was founded by prince baba barangba saka forgive my pronunciation if i didn't pronounce it well but barangba saka in 1770. now now the dialect of the yoruba spoken in essay is prominently what obana that's what they speak what in essay now the town has a king who is oba yakubu baba luba or baba lola you know all those these are some of the names you take your time and then learn to pronounce them properly you know but now this it is, is a town that is known it has a, a, a prominent king that that rules in that town it is a home of the Ese museum which was the first museum to be established in nigeria did you get that now the if a town is the town of what the what Ese museum and it is the first museum we have in Nigeria. The Ese town, like I said, is known for 800 soap stones. 800 soap stones figure. Now let's consider some of the mediums that was used by the Ife people. Now the soap stone figures, we have 800 soap stones, which is what sculptural works that we found in Ife. They saw large quantity of soap stones figure. Some of them are seated on mushroom seats, some of them are standing, some of them, you know, broken hands to mention but a few. So these were the figures that were found in the Ese town. So where is Ese town? Ese town is close to Elore in Kwara State. That is the location for what? Ese. Elore in Kwara State. All right. So let's consider the characteristics features of this, this uh, Ese figure. Now the figure looks somehow real. Now in Ese, some of them, they, they don't look as real as that of the Benin and the Ife. So the essay, soap stones look somehow real. Some figures sit on mushroom stool and some hold things. They also have tattoo on their body. So whenever you ask, which of the arts has tattoo on their body? So which means this tattoo did not start today. 
started a long, long, long time ago, 1400 BC, thereabouts. So started that during that during that period. So now this figure, some of them have or they sit on mushrooms tools, and some we are holding something in their hands, and why some of have tattoo on their body. Now some of this figure, we are what? We are in kneeling position. Now some of them we are in kneeling position. They, they, they molded them in such a way that they are kneeling down. So let's take a good look at some of these images. I want you to take your time and observe some of these pictures. You see, some of them are seated in mushroom seats. <laughs> and you see, all right, some of them are some of them are kneeling down. So that's why this town is regarded as a town of what? 800 soap stone. So and look at these ones. <laughs> they look somehow real. They don't look as beautiful as that of the Ife and the Benin sculpture. But however, they look so artistic. Imagine creating this work before the colonization of the Westerners. All right. Now, in summary, now we explain the Nigerian traditional art. We state four Nigerian traditional art. The first one we, we talked about was the knock art. The second one we talked about was the Ife art. The third one we talked about was the Benin art. And the fourth one, which is the, the fourth one we talked about in this class, is the word essay art. So these are, we talked about the characteristics features, we talked about the, uh, the medium, and we also talked about the, 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 the locations. So I want to believe, we won't explain some of the brief history of these places. So I want to believe that you've gotten all this. All right. So let me try us with some simple question and see how far we've gone. All right. Now, number one, explain traditional art. What do you think about traditional art? Yes, these are the artifacts that we have found in different locations in Nigeria, such as the Nok art, the Ife art, the Benin art, the Essay art, ETC. Now, I, now I want you to try question number two. What art is the oldest art in Nigeria? What art is the oldest art in Nigeria? Nigeria. Okay. So, if you've been with me from now, thank you so very much for joining us. Ah, so let's dive into our exam guide. We just finished your cultural and creative art. You check your cultural and creative art. You get it checked. All right. You come down here. You choose the year. So let's see 2012. Let's try 2012. Let's see if we can have some questions there. And then you select your topic. You choose your topic. Cultural and creative art, what we did is art history. So you come down to art history. Okay, my art history, okay, my art history is already checked. My art history is already checked. All right, so you click on okay. And then let's get started. All right, so today we'll be looking at question number one. Essa is a town in the present dash state of Nigeria. It says the town in the present that state of Nigeria. So which state is a town? Is it in Edo state? Is it a Kwara state? Is it in Ocean state? Is it in Oyo state? Is it in Uva state? Come on now. This I flogged it over and over again. I won't give you the answer to this question. So you look it up and then if you feel it, you go back to the slide then go back to my lesson and then listen all over again for you to get it. All right, now let's see question number three. Question number three. Majority of the traditional African arts are in dash form. Majority of the traditional African art are in dash form. Majority of the traditional African art are in dash form. So if you say craft, you are wrong. Mosaic, you're wrong. Textile, you're wrong. Wall painting, you're wrong. You say sculpture, and then you're very correct. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide. Now the app scores and give a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. Now you can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also have other features that make learning fun. Now it is a must have for all serious students. Download the app from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and then share this video to anyone you know that would benefit from it. Thank you and bye-bye.